I was totally wrong about tripods. You see, for the longest time, I always thought that you wanted a solid, beefy tripod that would really resist wind or people bumping into it. So when I started my videography career, I picked this up, a set of Manfrotto 755 XB legs with a Manfrotto 502 HD head. And don't get me wrong, this is a great tripod. I still use it all the time, but it's heavy and it's bulky. And over the last year or so, I've come to realize that for the type of work I do, this tripod just doesn't make sense. I'm a wedding filmmaker and this thing is just way too bulky and heavy for my liking. Plus, to be able to accommodate tripods of this size, this is how I have to pack. I'm using a massive Think Tank Tripod Manager 44 case where I put three light stands, two tripods, and a monopod. I can usually fit my sling bag in there as well, but it's a pretty tight fit. On top of that, I also have to pack two full camera backpacks, an audio kit, a lighting kit, a gimbal, and sometimes my drone kit, depending on how many cameras I have in the backpacks. That's at least five cases and a loose gimbal that I have to load into my car, unload at the venue, pack around to a good storage place, and then unpack to access it all. That's way, way too much, and forget about air travel with that many bags. That's not gonna happen. So it got me thinking. The two biggest issues with my current setup are the tripods and the light stands. I'll deal with the light stands in a different video. I need new tripods. The obvious first choice was the Pink Design travel tripod. I mean, at this point, who doesn't use that thing? But then I looked at the price tag and had to go have a little bit of a cry. That's when I started looking for alternatives and saw that Newer had just released a new tripod, the LT32, at basically the same weight, size, and height as the one Peak Design offers. So I sent them an email and asked if I could have one for this video. They said yes and sent it over and I get to keep the tripod after making this video, but no money changed hands and they did not get to preview this video before it goes live. Right away, this thing is obviously way smaller and lighter than my big Manfrotto tripod. And if you've seen the Peak Design tripod, you're pretty familiar with this design. It's actually so small when collapsed that I can easily fit it into carry-on size luggage or stick it in the water bottle pocket of my backpack, making this perfect for traveling with. It even comes with this little zippered sleeve thing. I don't usually talk about carrying bags that come with products because most of the time they're big and clunky and just kind of crappy, but this one is very streamlined and adds almost no bulk to the package. I really like it, especially when I'm packing this up for travel, it just keeps it a little bit more protected in my bag. This guy is super easy to carry around too. I can walk around a wedding venue holding two of these without even really thinking about it. Lugging around the Manfrotto tripod though is a chore with just one. Two of them is horrible. It's really kind of amazing just how small this thing is, especially with how tall it can extend out to. With only the legs extended, the camera will sit just below my head, and with the center column extended, it's past my eye level. Incredibly impressive for a tripod that packs down so small. And for comparison, this is my Manfrotto Be Free Advanced tripod, another travel tripod. It's both significantly taller at the minimum height and shorter at the max height. The newer tripod is definitely nowhere near as tall as my big Manfrotto tripod, but it's not really supposed to be. It honestly works perfectly for weddings. I never really find myself needing to go higher than what this tripod can do. Now, when it comes to stability, this is obviously going to be less stable and less robust than my big Manfrotto tripod. That one is thick aluminum and this is carbon fiber. It also weighs a lot less, so it's going to flex more. It's going to be more sensitive if you bump into it a little bit, but that is not at all to say that it is flimsy or unstable. I have no concerns about leaving my camera on this and walking away from it. I think the main thing to keep in mind is just that it's probably gonna be a little bit easier to tip over if someone were to really bump into it. Just because it's so lightweight, with the Manfrotto tripod weighing more, it holds itself down just with its own weight. Something to be aware of, but it really doesn't concern me. With this being a tripod, the two things that I interact with the most are the leg latches and the head. I quite like this ball head. I think it's designed pretty well. I'm a really big fan of the locking lever for the ball head. It's an actual lever rather than a twist lock or a screw. And I really, really love that. It just makes it 
faster and easier to do it. You don't have to think about twisting something. You just grab the lever, flick it open, and it's done. I was a little bit let down when I realized there isn't a dedicated pan function though. I've seen some other tripods that have ball heads and also have a separate pan function. That way, if you need to adjust your shot just a little bit left or right, all you have to do is unlock that little pan thing and tilt it back and forth. You don't have to completely reset the ball head just to make a little tiny adjustment. This doesn't have that. It does have a workaround though. If you loosen the center column, you can effectively achieve the same thing since that column is cylindrical. It's not as elegant, but it totally works. The downside is that with the center column being cylindrical and not being locked in place, Every time you need to adjust the center column, you're also altering the camera angle left or right. Even if you're really careful, it's going to shift a little bit. So just kind of give and take there. Interestingly, the top half of the ball head, the part with the quick release, can actually be removed just by loosening this little set screw. There's no threads here or really any way to attach something yourself, but it does make me think that newer could pretty easily create a 360 degree panning base that you could add on if you wanted. In fact, they actually already make something like this, but it unfortunately wouldn't be able to attach to the tripod because the tripod doesn't have a thread right there. I did notice that the ball head itself is not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. I was having a little bit of a hard time making tiny precise adjustments. It's not a big deal, but something to be aware of. I love the quick release mount on this tripod but I also kind of hate it. I absolutely love that it automatically locks when you click in the plate. That's incredible. And all you have to do to release it is press this button. The whole thing can be locked by sliding the release button to the side, which is good, but I am a little bit worried that I might accidentally unlock the button and then accidentally release the plate. Kinda wish they would've put the release lock in a slightly different place. The fact that they use a Peak Design quick release plate here is genius. I am all for reducing the amount of proprietary quick release plates out there. And if you already use the Peak Design QR plates with your gear, this tripod will integrate perfectly with everything you already have. Now my dislike for this design is that you are limited to exclusively using Peak Design QR plates. No other plates will work here. In contrast to this, the Peak Design tripod also accepts the same quick release plates. But in addition to that, you can remove the little pins on the side and open it up to accepting basically any Arca Swiss plate. The newer tripod can't do that though. You're stuck with just using the Peak Design QR plates. Now, if you're all in on those QR plates already, then this doesn't matter at all. But for myself, it's pretty annoying. I keep a horizontal Arca Swiss plate on my cameras, one of which works directly with the Ronin-S quick release system. Unfortunately, the Peak Design plate does not work with the Ronin-S system, so I would have to swap quick release plates every single time I wanted to use this tripod with that camera. Very annoying. Luckily, the ball head that comes with this tripod by default is not the only one that you can use. Newer also gives you this little adapter piece that can be swapped out with the ball head. Using this, you can attach whatever tripod head you want. I usually throw on my iFootage Komodo K5S head because it's so small and so compact. It works really well with this tripod. I love, love, love that they include this piece. I know other brands also offer something like this, but I haven't seen anyone else include it by default with the tripod. Usually you have to buy it separately and it's like 30 or $40 for this little piece. I think having that in the kit by default really increases the usability of this tripod. It really takes it to the next level. It definitely becomes a bit less portable when you swap heads though, you kind of lose that super slim profile. The legs and latches on this tripod are good. They extend very easily, the latches close tightly, and if you do this, it doesn't make a horrible sound. I'm not really sure if this actually means anything, but the legs are quite stiff and they feel very sturdy when extended. They don't really seem to wobble or flex at all. To me, this is a very good thing, but again, I have no idea if this actually makes a difference in the stability of the tripod. The latches for the legs also seem good. With there being four latches on each leg, I do prefer to wrap my hand around all of them and undo them all at one time. When I first got the tripod, this was pretty hard to do. The latches were really tough to open all at once like that and again, tough to close. I slightly loosened the screws and that pretty much fixed it. Now it's super easy to open and close them all at the same time. I am a little bit nervous about the screws being loosened, 
but I put my weight on it after loosening and the legs held up super well, so it appears to be fine. After my time with this tripod, I am convinced that compact travel tripods like this are the only way to go for weddings. My kit shrank considerably in size when switching to this as my main tripod, which saves me a ton of space in my tripod case. The tripod is also dramatically lighter, so it makes it much easier to carry around at wedding venues, and it greatly lowers the weight of my luggage when traveling. I also don't have to go back and forth as much when setting up for a ceremony because I can carry two or three of these at the same time, whereas before I could really only take one tripod and then I'd have to walk all the way back to my case to grab the others. So whether it's this newer tripod or something else entirely, I wholeheartedly believe that if you shoot weddings, you should use some sort of super compact travel tripod. It just makes everything so much simpler. Your packing becomes easier, your bags become less heavy, your mobility is so much greater. In comparison to something like this Manfrotto tripod, you're definitely going to lose some height and overall stability is going to be a little bit lower. But at least for me, the benefits far outweigh the negatives and the lower height hasn't even really affected me. As for the newer LT32 tripod, this thing is really great. The ball head is wonderful, love the super simple click in quick release, and I love that they're using the Peak Design QR plates. I really appreciate the locking lever for the ball head, it's intuitive and it makes the ball head very quick to use. All of the buttons, levers, and knobs are just in really good places. I feel like my hands just know where to go to find them. I don't feel like I have to think about where anything is. I'm also so glad that they include this head adapter in the kit. It makes the tripod so much more versatile, really opens it up to being more useful, especially for videographers, because you can stick a fluid head on there and you're not stuck with just a ball head. And I really only have two issues with this guy no dedicated pan function, and being limited to exclusively using the Peak Design QR plates. If they slightly redesigned the head to have removable pins in the sides so that they could accept different Arca Swiss plates, that would be incredible. I realize that would probably mean you couldn't have the super simple click-in locking, but that's kind of something I'd be willing to sacrifice to enable greater compatibility. I have been very happy with this thing over the last month that I've been using it. I would definitely recommend this to people looking for a tripod like this, especially because it appears to be the cheapest option in this category of tripods. As far as I'm aware, the two main competitors are the Peak Design tripod and the Ulanzi tripod, with the Peak Design being $600 for the carbon fiber version and $380 for the aluminum and the Ulanzi being 370. Although it appears they may just be selling it at a permanent discount now for 300, I'm not really sure how that works. The newer tripod is also 300 though, making it literally half the cost of the Peak Design and at least on par with the Ulanzi, depending on what that one happens to be priced at. And from my limited experience using the Peak Design tripod, there doesn't really seem to be any dramatic differences in function or quality between that one and this. It's mainly just some slight design differences. Anyway, if you're shooting weddings, get yourself a travel tripod. It's so much more convenient. Okay, bye. Look, now I'm a part of your video. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs>